My last attempt to set up a database with AI was an absolute train wreck. And I think that it's just because I left it too open-ended, maybe, you know, we had to install a database, an ORM, and we needed webhooks. And we had to figure out how to map those locally. And I think it was just too many steps. And everyone was like, well, hey, why don't you just use Convex? It does all of those things. And to be totally honest, they sponsor so much stuff that I just kind of assumed that it was shitty, <laughs> but people actually like it. So I'm going to give it a try, see how AI handles it. And uh, yeah, let's get into it. To start off, we have a Next.js app that's already integrated with AuthKit. And I've also taken the liberty of adding a cursor rules file that has some helpful rules for programming. I'll link a video to that in the card above. So with that, we can get started. Let's open Cursor Composer and start describing what we wanna do at a high level. You and I are web developers building a B2C boilerplate that anyone can use to quickly deploy a new app to the internet. The existing stack is Next.js, JavaScript Framework, and AuthKit by WorkOS for authorization and identity. Identity. My goal for this time is to set up Convex as an application backend. I like to follow the WorkOS recommendations for modeling a B2C application, and I've provided a link. This will involve creating our own user table and schema in Convex and integrating it into our app, receiving new WorkOS user objects from WorkOS via webhook and upserting them into our database. And I've provided a link for WorkOS recommendations on that. Do you have any questions before we get started, I'm happy to provide links to documentations and blogs for topics you're unknowledgeable in. Let's go. I have a good understanding of the task at hand. However, I do have a couple clarifying questions. Are you planning to use Convex real-time capabilities or are we primarily using it as a database and backend service? And my response is primarily as a backend service, but if real-time is easy to integrate, please let me know on a case-by-case -case basis. Two, it asks for the WorkOS webhook integration. Are you going to implement the events API approach as suggested in the blog post or stick with traditional webhooks for now? now I'll be honest, I actually didn't read uh, the blog post and I'm realizing now that this is kind of how we implement webhooks. So uh, let's go back to documentation and search for a new doc. I think this one should be it. Yes, there we go. And let's use that one instead. That is very much my bad. So for number two, my answer is you are right to ask. I believe I posted the wrong link to the WorkOS webhook instructions. Here is the updated documentation on syncing data with webhooks. Does this seem more consistent with the requirements? Quest. Let's proceed with setting up Convex as the backend service, and I'll mention real-time capabilities when relevant. Regarding the webhooks, the updated link you provided is indeed more consistent with your request. It outlines the process of syncing data using webhooks, which aligns with your goal of receiving new WorkOS user objects and upserting them into the database. Let's get started with setting up Convex and integrating it into our app. First, let's install Convex SDK in your Next.js project. Okay, npm install Convex. Now, I'm still having an issue where I can't open up a terminal inside of VS Code while I have Composer open. I don't want all those files to collapse on me. So we'll run that command over here in a terminal, npm install convex. Initialize convex in a new project. We'll run npx convex init, npx convex init. The init command is deprecated. Use npx convex dev once configure new instead. Okay, nice that we get a deprecation warning. Welcome to Developing with Convex. Let us get you logged in. Device name, Chan's MacBook Pro. Visit this URL to finish logging in. You should see the following code, which expires in 15 minutes to a browser that I am logged into Convex with already. Great. Now, I probably should have clicked yes to open the browser, but we I think we're already logged in. Uh, credentials saved. Okay, cool. Yeah, so it saved our credentials. We should be good. Project name. Yes, let's call this AuthKit Convex. B to C. Great, so it looks like it created a project for us, which we can find in our dashboard if we'd like to open that up. And it's provisioned a development environment for us. Save name is convex deployment to the env.local URL and a next public convex URL to, okay, so it saves some files for us. Write your convex functions in convex forward slash. Okay, so once we get an error like this, um, I think we can just post it into, uh, this will create a convex slash directory with some initial files. Okay, that's cool. Oh, this might actually be why we had a problem because these files already existed. That might be uh, that might be problematic. Now let's create a schema for our user table. Okay, so before we dive into this, let's paste this error that we got. 
this impact the instructions three and later, or will it resolve itself if I continue, 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 and then pasting our instructions. Now, one thing that kind of sucks about not having the terminal available to us is, is that we can't do that whole like quick debug with cursor. Not that I've had great luck with that actually <laughs> posting the, oh shoot, ah! I hit accept all instead of send. Ah, I wasn't paying attention. Okay, so let's hit that. The error indicates that convex couldn't find a default export in your schema file. Let's fix this issue. First, make sure you have a convex schema TS file. If not, create it in convex schema TS. Ensure that you have a default export of your schema. Update the file to look like this. Okay, so we have a new file and um, if you, oh, do we have like some, <laughs> yeah, we had some boilerplate or something. Okay, so the suggested code is to have this. Okay, after making this change, try running convex initialize command again, NPX, NPX convex init. This should resolve the error you encountered. Once the initialization is successful, you can proceed with the rest of the instructions, step four and later as previously outlined. If you still encounter issues, okay, so let's accept this and move back over here to run NPX convex init. The init command is, oh yeah, again, we can't run that command. We should probably provide that back to cursor as context. To clarify, the initialization, initialization process worked and I have a new project in convex. Just the validation failed. How do I update just that step? I see if the initialization process worked and you have a new project on convex, but only the validation field, you can update the schema without reinitializing. Here's what you need. Okay, so we have our schema. We need to run the following command, npx convex push. This command will validate the schema and push it to convex project. If there are any issues, it will provide an error. If the push is successful, you should see a message indicating that the schema was updated. After this, convex project should be fully set up with the correct schema and you can proceed with the rest of the implementation steps forward and beyond. Okay, so let's give it another try. NPX convex push unknown command. Uh, okay, start deploying with convex by running npx convex dev. Like I keep wanting to read stuff, even though I really I'm, I'm trying to do this stuff all by cursor. I'm not even gonna tell it much. I'm just gonna say I'm getting this error output. Okay, hopefully that will give it what it needs to know what the updated API is. It seems convex CLI has changed since my last update. Let's use the correct command to update your schema. Instead of npx convex push, use convex deploy. This command will deploy your changes, including the schema to your convex project. If you wanna validate your schema without deploying, you can run npx convex dev. Great, so we'll run this first and should give us some kind of validation right? Okay. You know, this is annoying going back and forth. I think that now that we don't have anything actively in unsaved files in cursor compose, we can close this for now, open our terminal and our chat and start running these here. So we're going to run npx convex dev again, where we'll get all of this output. I'll grab this and say add a composer, add to chat. So that will add to chat and I'll say, help me debug this. Now this is not in our composer window. So hopefully all that context is still held on to and it remembers the commands and whatnot, but we'll see. Errors are coming from the convex user TS, not the convex schema file you've shown. The issue is that you're using string literal instead of convex validators in your table definition. Here's how to fix. Okay, so let's apply that, accept. The key changes, import V from convex values, use V string instead of string, use V optional string for optional fields. For the query, and mutation function. Ensure you're properly typing the arguments and return values without seeing the full file. It's hard to give more specific advice, but here's a general structure. This is the complete file. Can you make the required updates? And we'll, we'll include the user TS file, which we have open. Sure, I'll update the complete file to fix the TypeScript errors. So apply, accept. Change define table to v object to users schema definition. Update the args in the upsert user mutation to convex validators. The handler function remains mostly the same as the args are now properly typed. These changes should resolve the type errors you're seeing. All right, so let's now try running this command again, npx convex dev. And again, we're having these convex errors, but I think maybe that uh, didn't save. So let's try it again. Okay, cool. Convex functions ready. So it was just a, I, I hadn't saved it. Now, before we move any further, I want to jump into convex and see what this 
this looks like. So we have our new off-kit convex B2C application. We don't have any data yet. We do have a function, so users upsert. And it looks like that is the function that we uh, created. So this would be in a convex uh, users TS. Okay, great. Uh, files, schedules, logs. Um, we don't have any of that stuff yet. So, uh, so we're in dev mode, which is great. That seems to be working. So now the other command that we could run was npx convex deploy. Okay, you're currently currently deploying against your dev deployment, decisive Corgi 858. Your prod deployment, confident herring, serves traffic at this URL. Make sure that your published client is configured with this URL for instructions. Okay, so do you want to push your code to your prod deployment now? No. Okay, so we're not going to run that command yet. We're not ready for production quite yet. Let's open Composer again and finish the rest of our steps. I'll have to jump back a little bit and try to find those final steps. Okay, don't forget to add the necessary environment variables, work OS API key, webhook secret, and next public comments URL. Finally, register your webhook endpoint with work OS dashboard as described in the documentation you provided. This setup follows the work OS recommendation for modeling B2C application, it creates a user table and convex, integrate, integrates it into your app, and sets up a webhook endpoint to receive new work OS user objects and upsert them into the convex data database. Remember to implement the proper error handling and logging in production. Okay, so let's um, get the work OS side of things set up with our environment variables. Uh, we have an env.local which was generated by convex. Let's copy these work OS values, delete that file, and there we are. Now let's take another look at what's been generated for us. We have a work OS webhook that does in fact use the convex HTML HTTP client, but we are getting some errors here. Let's try fixing these with AI. The error suggests that the webhook data object doesn't have first name and last name properties. WorkOS likely uses first name and last name instead. Let's update the destructuring. Update and accept. This change should resolve the TypeScript errors, which it looks like it does. Okay, what else do we have? We have an error right here. Let's see if we can fix this with AI as well. The error occurs because user upsert user is being passed as a string, but convex expects a function reference. To fix this, implement the mutation from convex function and use it directly. So we'll apply that, accept. And now we have another error. This is just gonna go back and forth on me again. This is such a like a trap. I'll probably have to share types in. Um, type string or null is not assignable to string or undefined. Okay, the error occurs because first name and last name from work OS might be null, but convex mutations expect a string or undefined. Here's a concise fix. Cool. This is the nullish coalescing operator. Okay, yeah, yeah, we got it. Error is unknown. So um, I actually don't really care. As long as it goes away, I'm just gonna accept and apply. Okay, cool. Let's save those changes to our webhook. And the funny thing is at this point, I actually don't know what the application should do. <laughs> so let's just try going back to our terminal, restarting and visiting it inside of a browser. Okay, you're calling get user on a path that isn't covered by the auth kit middleware. Make sure it's running on all paths you're calling. Okay, so now if I'm not mistaken, we should also see this error in the terminal. Yes, we do. So I think we can pop this into chat. Please help me debug this error. There occurs when you're trying to use the get user function from auth kit in the route that isn't protected by the auth kit middleware. Yes. To fix this, you need to update the middleware configuration to cover all the paths where you're calling get user. Um, here's how to do it. Open the middleware TS file, update the configuration to include all paths if you want to protect all routes. Okay, let's accept. I'm still unsure what apply, accept, and then I still have to save it does, um, but whatever. Uh, the configuration protects all routes except for the root route and API calls. Adjust the public routes array as needed for your app. If you only want to protect specific routes, we could do this. Actually, this is what I want. I want to um, protect all of the dashboard and profile routes instead. So yeah, let's let's do that. Oh, wow, it's trying to use clerk. Import auth middleware from clerk. Uh, that is not, that is not right. <laughs> well done, clerk. Let's go to uh, work OS, developer, documentation. There should be some kind of uh, auth kit quick start guide. Quick start. 
alert. And then I'm not sure if this retains next yet. It doesn't. So this could be problematic um, for us. I may have to just copy and paste. Yeah, so let's uh, copy this. You're tempting to use Cluric, but I'm using WorkOS. This is the example config on their website. Use it to construct the middleware for WorkOS. Got it, let's construct the middleware for the work. Okay, uh, it keeps repeating me, which I find desperately annoying. Apply and accept. Applies middleware to all routes except the API routes. Uh, if you wanna protect only specific routes, yes. So that's what I want. Hopefully it doesn't try to insert Cluric again. Yes, okay. This will apply the middleware to the route path. Okay, that is what I want. Um, let's save this and um, restart this server and see how things go. Now, I think I also need to run dev, mpx convex dev, I believe. Now, let's see how this looks. Still getting the same error after the suggested change. Uh, I'm not sure which, let's see, which path is it trying to open? So, okay, so let's add all of these. We're gonna say the route paid. Let's just throw all this stuff in there. <laughs> Done. Now let's see what we get. I see the issue now. The problem is, is that your middleware is not covering all the, oh my gosh. <laughs> I see the problem now. Same exact thing that I said last time. Uh, okay. So if I apply, are we seeing it? Okay. So it's saying that I need to do all of, it's, it's just really convinced that I need to do all of them. Stack files, images, favicons. This should cover both the homepage and the root route and your accounts page. Also make sure that your callback route is correct correctly set up the auth handle function in your callback route TS should be working as expected. If you're still encountering issues, if there persists, it might be helpful to add some logging or error handling in your get user calls. Okay, okay, but I don't want the root route to be protected. Ah, I see you want to protect all the routes except the root route. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Let's modify the middleware. Okay. Oh man, I see all these things and it's just too complicated to read. But again, we're trying to trust it, I guess. Okay, what exactly does accept do? It just takes away that UI. Apply the middleware to all routes except API routes. Next JS. Okay. Exclude the root path. Okay. So we should be able to like just open a basic page at this point, theoretically. Good fucking grief. <sighs> I didn't save it. <laughs> oh my word, this is pretty frustrating. Okay, it's just trying to get user. This is uh, not what I want. So how do I, how do I restore that file? Can I do that? No, okay, so can I get restore here? No, I'm cheating by writing git, but whatever. Restore, um, was it source middleware, TS? It should be fine. I don't see why we need to touch this. It sure does seem convinced though that we need to do something. Okay. So which page are we calling get user on? This page? Okay, import get user. Okay, so that's the account page. We're totally fine with it happening on the account page. Okay, so at some point we updated the application root page for what reason? Okay, let's restore that. Okay, so the dashboard is calling get user or the root page is calling get user. Now, is it pissed because it's trying to build this? Is this? Okay, let's add all this, stash it, and run this without any of the changes that we had. <sighs> Seems to load, we can sign in, I believe, and view our account details. So we know that that works. Now, what happens? Git stash pop. Let's try running it again. Oh, oh crap. So this is trying to use the pages API directory for this. That's probably why it's pissed. All right, let's open this up. I think I'm having trouble because this file was generated in the pages API directory, but my app is using the app directory APIs. <laughs> Nothing. Ah, uh, yes, I see you're right. The pages API directory is used for pages router in Next.js, but you're using app router. Uh, let's move this to app router structure. Okay, cool. So, oh man. Blech. Next, good Lord. Uh, new folder, API, and uh, we'll have a new file, which would be work os webhook.ts. Okay, if we, if that file exists, can we apply it, apply this to it? Yes, accept, save. Key changes, import next request request and next response from the server. Rename the function to post uppercase to handle post request. Use next auth. Okay, okay, okay. Um, remove the else block. Adjusted how we use work OS signature after making these changes. Delete the old one. Okay. <sighs> 
That was rough. That was probably uh, uh, fighting me in some of my previous efforts as well in previous videos. Okay, so now we're getting an internal server error. Let's see what's going on. This error suggests that Nexus is still trying to read from the pages directory that doesn't exist. This cannot happen if you're, oh, this can happen if they're remnants. Um, let's see, um, let's open next.js config. Did anything there change? Okay, we wanna check this, ensure there's no pages directory in your project root. If there is, remove it. Now, I didn't restart the server, so uh, I know that Next has a lot of caching between builds, so that could be it. Let's see if it's that, doesn't look like it. Okay, yeah, let's uh, let's let's try running this. The, what is it, sure there's no pages directory. Now, I think app directory is the default, so let's try running dev again. Um, okay, cool. Good gracious, that took a second. So uh, let's sign in with AuthKit, see what happens. Okay, so we're already signed in. Uh, I, I I think we still have a cookie, um, a session cookie set there. So let's sign out and run the whole uh, login flow, just to be sure. Okay, cool, perfect. Okay, great, 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 great. Now, uh, question, we didn't see anything happen on the convex side of things, I don't think. Convex function ready in order to push um, convex, add convex to your package dependencies, convex functions ready. Let's look at convex and see if we got any new users. No, we didn't get a user on sign up. And the reason there is uh, we haven't actually set up this webhook to work with WorkOS. All right, so how do I set up the webhook to work with convex? Okay, so to set up the webhook with work with convex, you need to make a few adjustments. Here's what you should do. Use the app router version. Um, so source app as it's more modern, update like this. <laughs> to just rewrite the whole thing. Okay, sure. Make sure the convex users file is correct. Sure. Kind of feel like I'm going to get sent around in circles. Set up the webhook in the WorkOS dashboard. Go to the WorkOS dashboard, navigate the webhook section, create a new webhook endpoint, select the events you want to receive, and save the webhook secret and use it in webhook secret in your env file. These steps should set up your webhook to work with convex. The webhook will receive events from work os when the user id is created it will use convex to upsert okay now we actually just got this thing the way that we wanted it i thought i'm not sure why we would want to delete validation um at this point i think that it thinks that i'm trying to do this locally right because we have this web this work os webhook route but i can't receive these locally i need to receive them at convex so so i'm gonna reject all for now and say we're having a mis understanding I want convex to handle the webhook directly I think this means the webhook belongs in the convex directory but I'm not sure I'm not able to receive webhook posts in the local application okay you're correct convex can indeed handle webhooks directly which is more efficient approach let's sign this up create a new file convex work os ts okay cool update convex user ts file it's not all if it's not already like this again not totally sure why we're getting rid of the query there but but that's fine. So we're gonna accept both of those. And then we need to run convex deploy. Set up the webhook in your WorkOS dashboard. Go to WorkOS dashboard, navigate to webhook section, create a new webhook endpoint. Use, set the URL. Okay, so this is looking more right now that it's using a convex um, URL. Select the events you want to receive. Yes, save the webhook secret and use it in webhook secret in the convex environment variables. Okay, so, okay. Um, I think I saved everything that I needed to save. Um, so let's kill both of these for now and run npx convex dev. Okay, preparing convex functions and we do get an error here. Couldn't resolve node crypto. Add to composer button doesn't seem to like me. So we have to copy and add to composer ourself. The error you're encountering is because convex functions run in a serverless environment that doesn't have access to Node.js built-in types like crypto. Uh, we need to adjust your approach. Let's modify this. Okay. Oh, so we're putting all of the auth inside of this? That doesn't seem right. Okay. Okay, why am I authenticating the user in the webhook? Oh my word. Apologize. Oh my gosh. Uh, you're correct that we shouldn't be authenticating the user in the webhook. I honestly don't understand how people are like, oh, we're building apps with this thing. Uh, it's it's insane to me. The webhook is meant to receive and process events from WorkOS, not authenticate users. Yes. Let's correct this and simplify the webhook handler. Here's an updated version. Okay. Seems like it is right-ish. I don't know. Um, fuck, it put it in the pages directory again. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
Oh my word. Just receive the webhook payload and signature. Okay. Oh my gosh. Did it do that previously? And okay, this is this is cursed. No, I did it then. <sighs> I want to delete this. I don't want that in there anymore. <sighs> Okay, MPX convex dev. Okay, preparing functions. So it looks like it got that. I don't know how we got so far, so far off base. Um, okay, so I'm gonna sign into work OS. Gonna go to webhooks. We need to create a new webhook. And what URL will this live at? So in convex functions, um, I guess this is it, hey? Okay. How do I get the URL? All right, let's ask AI. How do I get a convex development URL? Okay, so uh, navigate, run npm run convex dev. Command starts convex development server. Once it's running, it will display a URL in the console output. Okay, uh, yes, I think it had done that previously. npx convex dev. Okay, now it's just saying functions ready, npx convex. Okay, uh, that is not happening. All right, I remember seeing it when I did npx convex deploy. It told me this was the URL for my local development. Oh, it's also in my env files and file yes okay so it's gonna be this and then i believe the function name let's see how that works so decisive corgi 858.convex.cloud uh, slash work os webhook okay and we want to send not all user but user creates actually yeah let's just send all users okay let's open this webhook and send a test event 404 not found i guess i could have tested that url on my own i think i need to run npx convex dev again uh, let's see let's just put that whole thing on the end all right uh we're resorting to looking things up um convex convex functions url technically we're still uh using ai here i guess uh convex uh returns um, api query api mutations api actions the full url to call convex functions has this structure so deployment url slash api slash function type so your convex url is acoustic panther 78 728.convex.cloud function type is query mutation or action. Okay, but how do we differentiate the different functions or is there only ever one function handler? Now, I believe this is gonna be a mutation. So let's update the webhook. It's gonna be API mutation and let's send a test event. Another failure. Okay, this page isn't working. That looks like a different error, which is nice. Okay, now what kind of, let's see, what type of event are we using? So in our work OS webhook, we have an action okay and then generated that looks like what api for work os on here okay let's try sending in the api query okay still failed with a 404 which means that this url doesn't seem to be working at all i'm just oh fuck <sighs> All right, so I was super frustrated and decided to actually read some documentation, which I'm I kind of a little bit annoyed that I have to do. So um, I found this one on HTTP actions, which I think are the public version um, of the uh, the functions. Uh, so I'm gonna grab this and see if providing this as context helps us out at all. Uh, I think we're having trouble again. I need this function to be available by URL to receive data from the work OS webhook calls. Does this doc on convex A HTTP actions seem relevant. HTTP action documentation is indeed relevant and exactly what we need for this use case. Let's modify our approach to use convex HTTP actions to handle the work OS webhook directly. Here's how we can update the convex work OS webhook TS file. Now to expose this HTTP action, you need to create a new file convex HTTP.TS. Uh, this setup will make your webhook handler available Available at your deployment name.convex.site slash. Okay, this is what we were after. With this approach, the webhook is handled directly by convex and eliminating the need for a separate next API route. The handler is available via URL. We're using convex HTTP actions, which is the correct way to handle this. Uh, no, we still need to implement webhook signature verification for security. You may need to use a pure JavaScript implementation. Okay, as convex doesn't provide built in crypto libraries. Libraries. So let's accept this and we should say MPX 
run dev should give us that endpoint still. npx convex dev. Let's see if that is able to deploy those functions. And it should be available at our convex URL.site webhook. So let's try that. So we have our dev URL. Um, this is convex.cloud. And we're going to say convex.site slash the webhook name. Okay, no matching routes found. So that's not a good sign uh, so far. Let's see if we get a different error if we yeah name it something else. No, we don't. Okay, does this have to be deployed or should it work with convex dev as well? Yes, npx convex dev should work for testing your HTTP actions locally. Here's what happens when you run npx dev convex dev. Um, it starts a local development server. It watches your convex functions and automatically redeploys them when changes are detected. And it provides a local URL for HTTP actions. I see, when you run npx convex dev, you should see output in your terminal that includes a local URL for HTTP actions. It looks something like this. Okay, so it's just gonna be a local host URL. Uh, to test it, run npx convex dev, use the provided local URL. Okay, that's not what we want. Okay, so I guess we do finally have to deploy this. Okay, so let's run npx convex deploy finally and see what happens. So it says we're gonna push it to our prod deployment, which I guess is our only option at this point. Um, and it is available at this URL, convex cloud. Now, what we really need is convex.site slash workOS webhook, where we see the same no matches found. Jump into convex where we do see this post um, here where we can run certain actions. Let's try setting it up in workOS with the updated URL, keeping our options the same and send a test event. Whoa, okay, so this one was delivered. So uh, that endpoint is active and we see a response here. Let's check out our data. Hey, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, this has been a nightmare so far. Okay, cool. So uh, we have the email name, last name, workOS ID, and the creation date. Great. So if we have this in place, and I have my user, and I sign out of this user, and sign up with a different account, verify, view my account details, and then head back to Convex. Yes! <laughs> we'll have a new record. That was exactly exhausting and absolutely all that I have energy for uh, at this moment. So frustrating. However, um, it is it is nice to see that uh, we actually got it working. A couple of things that I am excited for. Convex does seem to be a really good pair for this type of application because we can set those HTTP actions up and just get those web hooks directly um, from the service, which is great. And we actually didn't have to write any schema code or even the functions to handle those. So that part of it works really well. Unfortunately, Cursor's baseline understanding of Next and Convex is very out of date. So we really needed to give it all of the information uh, that was relevant to our purposes. That does require a lot of upfront research. And I did find that I had to cancel a lot of suggestions because it just kept putting things in the pages directory for some reason, trying to authenticate users inside of the Convex actions. It's very, very frustrating. Now, again, this is my fault because because we know that Cursor and Claude are bad at this type of uh, thing. And it's much better if you actually have something in place, scaffold out the file, and then let it uh, adapt it, providing the context along the way, instead of actually trying to know what these APIs, how these APIs have changed uh, over time. It wasn't until I took a break away from it and actually looked at the docs myself that this, this thing t started to turn around. And so um, I really just, I, I, I legitimately don't understand when people People are like, oh yeah, we built an app, we had no coding experience, and it worked. I don't understand how that's possible. I legitimately don't understand how that's possible. In my experience, it has old data by default. You get in these loops where it keeps trying to switch it back and forth um, between one implementation and the fix, and there's you keep handing it errors, and it doesn't really know what to do with them. And the only way out is to find the documentation that you need and provide it to it, but it doesn't give you any hints as to what documentation to look for it doesn't tell you that it doesn't understand the problem. And so that can be exceedingly frustrating.
game. I thought that I had scoped this down enough. I don't think that I did. Now that I know a little bit more about convex, I could have just said I want to be able to store user objects in here and, and, and not tried to introduce the function part of it and just set up a database with a schema and then kind of moved from there maybe, but I would have no way to test that really. So yeah, I don't know. It is what it is. I'll let you decide what your thoughts are on this project based on what you saw. Subscribe and like if you find this kind of self-torture helpful or entertaining at least. I'm fantastic. See you in the next one. Bye.